Has your teacher told you that you can improve your writing by varying the sentence structure? Well, how do you do that? What does it mean to vary sentence structure? Are there different kinds of sentences? Stick around and on today's episode of Never Stop Learning, you will learn all about it. We're going to be looking at a couple of aspects of sentence construction that can really be helpful to you as you're learning how to vary your sentences. One is the jobs of sentences and the other is types of sentences. We'll look at those each uh, individually. And before we get started though, I've noticed that most of my views are coming from viewers who are not subscribed to my channel. I want you to have a notification when I put up new lessons and new videos. So please take a second to subscribe right down here in this corner or subscribe after you've watched the video. But don't forget because I want to have you get all of these lessons so that you can become great readers and writers. We're going to look at the jobs that sentences have first of all and I'm going to be comparing these jobs to the jobs that dogs have. There are herding dogs, service dogs, bird dogs, watch dogs, police dogs, and sled dogs, just to name a few. You might be able to think of other types of jobs that dogs can have. And in each of these roles, no matter what type of dog they are, they might be able to serve in this role just because of their training, just because of the way they're presented. When we look at jobs of sentences, there are four different labels we give the four different kinds of sentences because of the jobs that they do. First, there's a declarative sentence. A declarative sentence makes an announcement. It tells something ends in a period. Next, we have interrogative sentences. Interrogative sentences interrogate or ask questions. They end in question marks. We also have exclamatory sentences. Exclamatory sentences exclaim something or tell something really exciting. And exclamatory sentences end in exclamation points. Finally, we have imperative sentences. Imperative sentences make it imperative or important that you know or understand something. Now, if it's a really strong imperative, it probably ends in an exclamation point. Other imperative sentences that are telling you something to do or to think end in periods. Is it important to understand these different jobs of sentences? Well, because if you're varying your sentence structure, if you simply write declarative sentence after declarative sentence after declarative sentence, your writing might get a little boring. You want to mix it up. Now, it's not always appropriate to mix up and use all of these types of sentences, say, in the same paragraph, but do keep in mind that by changing out these different sentences that are labeled according to the jobs they do, declarative, interrogative, imperative and exclamatory, you can vary your sentence structure. But wait, that's not the only way you can vary sentence structure. Sentence types are another way that you can consider when you're thinking about how you can vary your sentence structure. Types of sentences is another way you can approach this whole idea of varying sentence structure. There are four types of sentences and they're typed that way because of what they're made up of. Let's go back to our dog examples and think about different types of dogs and what they're made up of. There's poodles, first of all. I used to have a poodle named Misty. And poodles are active, proud, smart. They're kind of small, they live 10 to 18 years. Sometimes they have really funny haircuts. Another type of dog is a German Shepherd. Now German Shepherds are confident, courageous, and smart. They get bigger than poodles, and they're actually considered a herding dog according to the American Kennel Club. 
Then there's mutts. I bet a lot of us have had mutts before. I had a mutt and his name was Bo. He was a great dog. And even though I couldn't really specify um, that a mutt has a certain temperament, each mutt has their own temperament and their own physical attributes based upon their heritage, their mother, father, grandparents, and so on. So that's the type of dog that we call a mutt. There are also greyhounds. Greyhounds are gentle, independent, and noble. They're fairly large, and they live about 10 to 13 years. They look like a greyhound. They have a certain look about them, and that's why they are a greyhound, a certain type of dog. Dalmatians, those black and white spotted dogs that are pretty easy to pick out from a crowd, are dignified, smart, and outgoing. They get to be up to about two feet tall, maybe 70 pounds. They live again about 13, 11 to 13 years, and they are considered by the American Kennel Club as part of the non-sporting type of dogs. And we have collies. When I was growing up, I had a collie named Wendy, and she was definitely a devoted, graceful, and proud dog. About two feet tall, uh, life expectancy, 12 to 14 years, and this type of dog belongs to the herding group of dogs, again, according to the American Kennel Club. Now, different types of dogs have different physical characteristics, uh, different attitudes toward life, different social qualities. Here is a pretty cute type of dog. This is my little puppy, Seamus, and he's a Yorkie. He's very fun-loving, very devoted. He likes to be a lap dog. Gets a little yippy sometimes, but he is the type of dog that is called a Yorkie. So, back to types of sentences. We have four basic types of sentences. Even though there are way more types of dogs, there are four types of sentences. The first type is a simple sentence. Simple sentences are made up of one independent clause. There may be commas to separate parentheticals or items on a list. Examples of simple sentences are the dog ate kibbles or he drank water. See how simple that is? Basically just a subject and a verb. There are also compound sentences. Compound sentences are made up of two or more independent clauses. They may contain either a semicolon or a comma with a coordinating conjunction. Here are a couple of examples. The first way shows you using a semicolon how to make a compound sentence. The dog ate kibbles, semicolon, he drank water. Notice the dog ate kibbles is an independent clause. He drank water is an independent clause. Hook those two together and you have a compound sentence with two independent clauses. The other way you can do that is to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction, like in the second example. The dog ate kibbles, comma, and he drank water. The comma separates the two independent clauses and the coordinating conjunction and uh, combines them into a compound sentence. Now, there are also complex sentences, and those are made up of an independent clause and a dependent clause. Now, there is something to take into consideration here. Let's look at the examples first, and then we'll talk about uh, whether or not you need a comma in a complex sentence. Here are a couple of examples. When it was time for his dinner, the dog ate kibbles. Notice, it was time for his dinner, and the dog ate kibbles are both independent clauses, but by adding that little subordinating conjunction, when, it turns, it was time for his dinner, into what we call a dependent clause. When it was time for his dinner. That is not a complete sentence, you guys. It's not even a complete thought. It's the beginning of a thought. But when we combine a dependent clause with an independent clause, we can make a complete sentence. When it was time for his dinner, comma, the dog ate kibbles. Now if the dependent clause comes before the independent clause, the clauses are separated by a comma. But look at the second example there. The dog ate kibbles when it was time for his dinner. 
we didn't need to use a comma after the independent clause because we simply connected those two clauses with the subordinating conjunction. The dog ate kibbles when it was time for his dinner, but if we put that dependent clause first when it was time for his dinner, then we do need a comma before we add the independent clause. Now, there's also compound complex sentences. Don't get upset, it's not that bad. You simply just take two or more independent clauses, which is a compound sentence, and you add a dependent clause, at least one dependent clause, to those two independent clauses, and that'll give you what's called a compound complex sentence. When it was time for his dinner, the dog ate kibbles and he drank water. When it was time for his dinner is our dependent clause because it begins with a subordinating conjunction, when. The dog ate kibbles is an independent clause and he drank water is an independent clause and those two independent clauses are bound together with that comma coordinating conjunction and into a little compound sentence like we saw before when we were looking at compound sentences. When it was time for his dinner, the dog ate kibbles and he drank water. Now again, if that dependent clause comes after the independent clause, you don't need to use the comma. The dog ate kibbles and he drank water when it was time for his dinner. Now I still had to use the comma with the coordinating conjunction to combine those first two independent clauses, but when I added the dependent clause at the end that made that compound sentence complex, I did not have to use a comma. You know, you guys, my motto is, if you're ever in doubt, should I use a comma? Should I not use a comma? Don't use a comma, because most people overuse commas. That's just a little tip. So how can this knowledge about sentence jobs and sentence types help you vary your sentence structure? Well, you now have eight different sentence structures that you can use. The four different jobs of a sentence, declarative, imperative, interrogative, and exclamatory. And you've also learned about four sentence types, simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences. If this video was helpful to you, I would love to know about it. Please give me a thumbs up on the video if it's helpful. If you would like more specific information on how to construct simple sentences, how to construct compound, complex, or compound complex sentences, please leave a comment down below for me because I'm more than willing to make some more specific video lessons for you if you feel like that would be helpful. But by simply varying your sentence structure, by mixing up and not always having declarative sentences, but sometimes putting an imperative in there, an exclamatory sentence or even an interrogative sentence can be very helpful. And likewise, don't always use simple sentences. Simple sentences are really very, um, a very immature way of writing. Once your writing begins to get more sophisticated in sixth, seventh, eighth grade and beyond, you will want to be using fewer and fewer simple sentences and more compound and complex sentences. You can wait a little while before you start tackling the compound complex sentences in your compositions if you'd like, but if you can really work on combining two simple sentences into a compound sentence, or combining an independent clause with a dependent clause and connecting them with a subordinating conjunction. And in the description below, I'm going to link to lists of coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions so you can see just what those words are. But if you could start working on really focusing on trying to write compound sentences and complex sentences, it's going to increase the sophistication of your writing by quite a bit. Again, as I said earlier, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notified by clicking the little bell icon every time I upload a new video lesson. If you'd like more information about this lesson, I would love for you to check out my blog. 
and I will display the address right here and the description below. The blog is written specifically to teachers um, talking about how to actually teach this lesson and all of the materials to teach this lesson are also available in a link from that blog. Thanks for watching. Work on that sophistication in your writing and never stop learning.